You'll find out down the road that you hate reading articles or books and you just can't focus anymore. You can't follow the arguments and you make it a habit just to have things summarized for you in the name of productivity and efficiency. But it's really in the name of you not having the mental capacity anymore to think. I don't know, man. At my company, if I had a junior dev accomplishing tasks, I'd be thrilled with them. But at my company, most of our junior devs don't know how to do anything. And it's kind of a drain training them on literally every task. And this is very common. So I'm starting to see this kind of sentiment more frequently. Mid to senior level devs that are frustrated that juniors can't seem to think anymore. They can't solve any problems on their own. In fact, they don't even know where to start. And the issue is not that the junior doesn't know enough tooling, like they haven't used GitLab CI/CD, or they haven't used the Swagger API interface interface before, but it's more that they can't go and read the documentation and make sense of it on their own in order to get the task done without assistance. This is a thinking issue, not a tooling issue. And this is where the whole AI appeal is coming in. If AI can do the thinking better than these struggling junior developers, then why even bother with juniors? But I think these two factors, the junior and AI, are themselves equal culprits here. Now the cell phone really became a powerhouse around 2007 to 2010 when the iPhone and Androids started competing. This gave us powerful computers that we'd literally slide into our pockets and pull out anytime we needed them. And with the rise of social media, we needed them more often than we thought. The cell phone and social media, they're great innovations of the 21st century and I'm thankful for them, but we all have to note the very negative effects that they brought. We don't talk anymore. I was at Starbucks the other day and there were like eight college students sitting at a round table all looking at their phones, not each other. They were all silent, not talking to one another, but all looking down, scrolling on their phones. And every now and then one would speak up and be like, huh, looks like Sarah failed biology. And a few seconds later, the other would be like, yeah, I saw that, crazy. And then silence. In waiting rooms, restaurants, whatever, everyone is looking down at these very small screens. I can know the past 20 years of history in detail from a high school buddy without having even talked to them or interacted with them for those 20 years. I just have to follow them on Facebook or whatever platform and stalk them regularly in my own little silent world. And short form video has killed our attention spans completely. I was just talking to a friend the other day about how hard it is to sit and read a book now when there's noise in the background. I struggle with it and turns out he struggles with it as well. And I fully attribute it to the years of managing my cell phone with all of its alerts and shortcuts and unsocial ability. Yeah, I made that word up. We're all addicted and we can all admit it. And we can all admit that there is no solution out there that works. All the apps and band-aids that have been created to help us beat this addiction are all just nonsense. So there are these great innovations that have come about and that have redefined society that also have produced negative outcomes to society as a whole. And AI will be no different. And I think we're at a point now where we can look back and see the good and the bad of cell phones and social media and perhaps try not to make the same mistake with AI usage. The masses will, but perhaps we can be a bit more proactive this time to not follow society into the next great experiment. Now with AI, there's this rush to produce smarter and smarter models. O1 is announced, and then five minutes later, O3 is announced, and now they're calling it AGI, which is really weird. But it can reach these benchmarks that no AI has ever reached. Great, but for what? So I don't have to look up how to center a div? So I can have it do my math homework? So it can create a blueprint for the next trust bridge we plan to build? As if anyone would trust those blueprints blindly? And I'm not saying at all that AI isn't useful or that I'm not excited about it. I am and I use it daily. But I'm saying, why are we, the consumers, in such a rush to make it do everything for us? Because the CEO of a big corporation uses it to answer all of his emails, doesn't mean Martha, the next door neighbor, should as well. I recently just came across this tweet by Greg Eisenberg. Just had a fantastic lunch with a 22-year-old Stanford grad. Smart kid, perfect resume, something felt off though. He kept pausing mid-sentence, searching for words. Not complex words, basic ones, like his brain was buffering. Finally asked if he was okay, his response floored me. Sometimes I forget words now. I'm so used to having ChatGPT complete my thoughts that when it's not there, my brain feels slower. He'd been using AI for everything, writing, thinking, communication. It had become his external brain, and now his internal one was getting weaker. Made me think about calculators. Remember how teachers said we needed to learn math because you won't always have a calculator? They were wrong about that. But maybe they were right about something deeper. We're running the first large-scale experiment on human cognition. What happens when an entire generation outsources their thinking? Don't get me wrong, I'm beyond excited about what AI and AI agents can do for people in the same way that I was excited in 2009 when the App Store was launched. But thinking out loud, you gotta think this guy I met with isn't the only one that's going to be completely dependent on AI. 
And this is the problem resurfacing all over again. What happens when an entire generation outsources their thinking? And this will be the problem with junior devs or new devs and the reason AI will be a much better substitute than you. Hey AI, sort this list and turn it into a map with the index as the keys. Boom, done. Hey junior dev, sort this list and turn it into a map with the index as the keys. What do you mean by map? Like key values? Do we start at zero? Do you want to start at one? It would just be easier for AI to do it. Who needs the junior? I see the appeal there. So if we just fall into place here, let OpenAI force us to consume AI daily, we'll probably end up being the victim once again in this next great innovation. But if you push back on what's being crammed down your throat a bit, you may just stand out as a very thoughtful person in a few years. So how can you avoid it while still reaping the benefits of AI? How can you be a junior dev who can still think well in the age of AI? How can you protect your thinking from being outsourced? Well, before we get to these, I have to pause for a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant, an app that can really help you learn foundational concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant's fun, it's practical, it has thousands of lessons from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, data, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and it's a much better use of your time than mindless scrolling. Maybe you want to dive deeper into large language models, neural networks, big data, or just learning the basics of Python, building programs on day one with their built-in drag-and-drop editor. Today, I started a new section on probability in ways that probabilities change when new information is introduced. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also, in the process, become a better thinker overall. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash travismedia or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. So back to our question, how can you be a person who thinks well in the age of AI? How can you protect your thinking from being outsourced? First, read and write daily. So Dan Co recently wrote this. Fill your brain in the afternoons with books, learning, and socialization. Empty your brain before bed with journaling, planning, and meditation. Use your brain in the morning with creation, output, and focus. You've heard the saying, garbage in, garbage out. It's true. TV, a lot of social media, mainstream media, most of it's garbage. However, choosing to read books regularly, good books from great people of the past, is a good thing. Fill your brain with good books or long articles or helpful courses. Yes, but many tend to stop there. They consume a lot, but they never process. What do you do with all these great facts, storylines, or lessons? Well, they get forgotten, unless you process them. And this is where writing comes in. Writing allows you to process the information you're taking in. It enables you to form thoughts and opinions and retain information. It's altogether good for you. But Travis, AI can write better than all college English majors. I don't care. It's not real. We don't write just to produce junk for people to read or some AI nonsense for people to learn from. We write for ourselves. We write to properly process and capture this great information we're consuming. And what is created is good then for other people to read. When we think about writing, we immediately think SEO, web traffic, affiliate links, and are worried it won't go viral. But what about the positive effects it has had on you as a person, on helping you build and strengthen your own thinking, your ability to think well? That's more important. Go and read an opinionated article by DHH and see how he can think through current events through the lens of a seasoned programmer, and then go and read some AI-generated blog and tell me which one is a complete waste of characters. So the first thing I would say is you need to make sure you're still developing your thinking and processing, and you do this by reading great books regularly or listening to great books regularly and then processing it all through writing. And who cares if no one reads it? Who cares if it doesn't go viral? It's largely for you. It allows you to jump into the conversations of the day. And it's for you to be proactive against an age where AI seeks to dumb you down. Second, you need to create well-defined categories for AI. So there are times to use AI and there are times not to use AI. And it's critical to know the difference because otherwise there will never be a time not to use it. In your business, your job, your programming, Use it to speed up your workflow. Conversions, templating, finding bugs, all of this is fine. Another use case is for facts. Like, why do leaves die in the winter, but the tree stays alive and firm? Well, ask AI. Get the answer. Be a knowledgeable person. But it's a sidekick and nothing more. 
It's there to help you, not become you. These are the categories that it performs well in. The problem that's happening with junior developers and many other professions is that we're in such a hurry for answers. I want the answer and I can think about it for 10 minutes or I can just copy and paste the whole problem into GPT and get the answer. You know you've done it. Copied the entire web page or article into GPT and just said, solve it or sum this up. And to be honest, summarizing articles, while it sounds really helpful, is going to slowly burn out those active networks formed in your brain. You'll find out down the road that you hate reading articles or books, and you just can't focus anymore. You can't follow the arguments, and you make it a habit just to have things summarized for you in the name of productivity and efficiency. But it's really in the name of you not having the mental capacity anymore to think. We shouldn't want AI to summarize a great article for us. Maybe some dry theoretical article, but not articles of opinion. We should make a cup of coffee and consume it and let our minds wonder about it and form our own thoughts about it and learn and be reminded of that time three years ago where we did this thing and so forth. So what I'm getting at is there are two categories here. Number one, a usage where it does make you more productive and takes away time-wasting tasks and helps us learn new things and does the monotonous stuff for us and all of that. And then two, there's the creative side that we're slowly giving away. We can't think anymore because the last time we had to, we decided not to and we're slowly going down this road of cooling our brains off. Don't rush to open ChatGPT. And when you open it, make sure you're in the right category for using it. If not, put in the work. Your humanity will thank you. And then third, be a bigger picture problem solver. This is where the lines between real developers and AI separate. AI can do the technical. It can write the code for reversing a list or generating a server or the next advent of code challenge. You know you guys are using it. These are the particulars and often AI is good for these. But as developers, more than the particulars, we are bigger picture problem solvers. The particulars are easy. The bigger picture is not. And much of the bigger picture problems that you aim to solve don't involve coding. It involves the intersection of the practical and technical. It's the such and such sport is really up in ratings this year and we keep hitting our server limits, I think we need to consider setting up auto-scaling. Or the company is calling these raw SQL scripts from the app's front end, perhaps we should consider not calling them directly and doing it in some other way for security reasons. And to be honest, these are not really junior level issues, but the faster junior devs start thinking this way and realizing the particulars are just means to an end, means for the bigger narrative, then the faster their value as a dev will grow. If you're a new hire today or in your first six months to a year, try to take the time each day to learn how your company, contract, or project is run in the big picture. What is it solving overall? Where is it headed? And at that point, decide where you fit into it and how you can make bigger contributions to it in a broader way than just your centering of a div. So in conclusion, AI is here to stay and you can decide if you want to get wrecked again or not. And you do this by having these categories where you allow AI and these categories where you reject AI and instead allow your human self to flourish. If you make these distinctions, consume great books, write regularly to process that information, and become a big picture problem solver as humanity allows their brains to cool off while yours is firing away, you'll find yourself ahead of many and ultimately be seen as valuable to any who do the same. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.